Tonight on your side investigates illegal tags. We've uncovered disturbing evidence that North Carolina is providing licenses and tags to untold thousands of people who have no business getting one because they don't even live here. We traveled to the New York City area and found out illegal immigrants and other people who can't get a license there are coming here because police say our state makes it far easier on them. Tom Rousey made the trip and he joins us live tonight. We suspected this for a while. We did, and this actually all started with an off-the-cuff remark by the mayor of Morristown, New Jersey, who said he noticed a lot of North Carolina plates in his town. Well, we investigated and we found evidence that huge numbers of folks from we don't know how many states are coming here to get a license they shouldn't have. Now, why should you care about this? Well, police say because of this, you're paying higher insurance, criminals are getting away, and the ultimate fear is a terrorist will take advantage. Dover, New Jersey, population 18,000. It's well over 400 miles from the North Carolina state line, so you wouldn't expect to see this and this and this all that often, but you do. You found a thousand cars with North Carolina plates. Yep. Captain Peter Ugaldi with Dover Police showed us this list of Carolina plates that his officers have spotted, most in the last couple years. 2005, 2005, and the list cuts off early last year. Ugaldi says there's likely far more than this. He drove us around to show us neighborhoods where it's a big problem. Sure enough, we found some plates. And check out the North Carolina tag on this car. It's got the new red lettering that they just started using in North Carolina last month. I mean, heck, you don't even see too many of these around Charlotte yet. And this is the second one we've seen up here. And on this very same car, check out the inspection sticker. This car obviously inspected recently right here in the state of New Jersey. And you want proof this is going on elsewhere? Well, that night we went to nearby Morristown and found plate after plate. I would venture to say that um, the only time they were in North Carolina was the day they got their license in North Carolina. Excuse me, ma'am. We tried to confront the folks with the licenses. Are you from North Carolina? No, my friend. But we couldn't get anyone to own up to Onin, one of the cars. One lady first told us the owner was in a nearby car, then she said it was her neighbor. So, like this house yeah. right here, the, your neighbor's? Yeah. The okay. silver one. Captain Ugaldi says there's no doubt most of the North Carolina licenses and tags should never have been given out. You think he's exaggerating? Listen to this. Almost 40 of those drivers listed the same North Carolina address. That's right, 39 people say they lived in this one house just outside of Raleigh. Since that isn't really where they live, when these folks commit crimes, it makes it tough for officers to track them down. Also, Ugaldi says people like this pay the much lower North Carolina car insurance rate, yet drive in more accident-prone New Jersey, meaning we're paying for their wrecks. The taxpayers of North Carolina are, are getting hit in their pocket. So why, ultimately, are thousands of people doing this? Well, after 9-11, New Jersey made it much tougher to get a license. North Carolina, not so much. It's obviously easier in North Carolina to get a license than it is in New Jersey. And easier to fraudulently get a license. Yes. And you got to goes on to say there's evidence somebody is taking people down by the van load to get licenses here. The real fear by some is terrorism. A number of the 9-11 hijackers used New Jersey licenses, so the state changed its law. Well, critics say next time it could be North Carolina that they use. Tom, this is outrageous. What's the state DMV planning to do? Well, I did reach them by phone today. They pointed out that they did cooperate with the Dover police in this investigation, and they also point out that North Carolina has changed its rules since 9-11. They say that the state now has one of the most secure licenses in the nation. However, they had no explanation for why. If that's so, these people are skipping four states to specifically come here to get a license. We're going to stay on this, Paul. So secure that we saw all those license plates in another state. Yeah, and we just went to two towns. I hear it's going on all over up there. Keep your eye on this one. we Will do. Tanya. Earlier this week, we showed you some shocking evidence. Thousands of people who don't live in our state coming here and getting illegal license plates anyway. Tonight, a man whose son was murdered by terrorists reacts to what we found. Our Tom Rousey is here. You broke the story for us, Tom. Monday night, so many people surprised to hear what you found. And tonight, we're learning more about why it is such a big deal. Yeah, we certainly are. And part of it is in my hand right here. In my hand, a list of hundreds of North Carolina license plates that police have run checks on in just one small town in New Jersey. Now, police say almost all of these were obtained by fraud, and they say it's likely going on all over the place up there. In tonight's On Your Side investigation, one man asks, how do we know the car of a terrorist isn't on the list?
North Carolina really should be ashamed of itself. This man is ripping the Tar Heel State. He says it's far too easy to get a North Carolina license. Clearly, uh, North Carolina is among the worst four states in the entire country, without question. You might be wondering why Peter Gadiel, who's a resident of Connecticut, has chosen to take on the state of North Carolina. Well, he's got a very personal reason for doing so. Five and a half years ago on 9-11, his son was one of thousands who died on this very spot when the First World Trade Center building went down. My son was, to me, very special. Jamie Gadiel was 23. He just started working at the World Trade Center six months before 9-11. And I miss him every minute of every day. And that's why I've been doing this for five years. Peter says the towers might never have collapsed if many of the hijackers hadn't been able to get licenses in states like New Jersey and Virginia. So he's been leading the charge, putting pressure on states to change. New Jersey and Virginia have changed, but Gadiel says North Carolina hasn't done near enough. You've had fair warning. You know, you know what a license can do. Evidence that backs up Gadiel's claim? Earlier this week, we told you about thousands of people in New Jersey who came to North Carolina to fraudulently get a license. License plate, a plate police say they couldn't get under New Jersey's stricter rules. Well, we, we, we recognize an issue with the plates. But Wayne Herter with the North Carolina DMV says the state has come a long way on driver's licenses. He says new technology like facial recognition and instant social security checks have dramatically reduced fraud. We believe we have some of the highest standards. Uh, in the country in terms of uh, requirements for a driver license. Gadiel is skeptical of that, but does say he's happy to see some of the changes with the driver's licenses. However, he says license plates and registration have got to follow suit. When the next 9-11 occurs and they use a North Carolina license, as they very likely will because you're one of the few states that gives them to such people, Americans will know that you guys voted to give them the licenses. You won't be able to escape the guilt. And the North Carolina DMV says they are working on the problem. They say a state bill that could become law later this year would force you to get a North Carolina driver's license before you can get a license plate. And they really feel, Tanya, that that will solve a lot of the issues here. Some really strong emotion from that father tonight, oh, Tom. I understand another bill that uh, tried to fix this got shot down even today. Yeah, right today, Republican State Senator Robert Pittenger of Charlotte introduced a bill to require a passport to be presented before an immigrant can get a license. But he tells me that Democratic leaders killed that bill today. It's surprising that everybody wouldn't want to jump on board with something like that. Well, there's a lot going on. A lot of different bills. Some are getting shut down. Some seem to be headed towards getting Tied passed. Tied to other things, mm -hmm. too, I imagine. Tom, mm -hmm. thank you. Paul? What do dozens of people, some living as, at least as far away as New Jersey, have to do with this house in rural North Carolina? Well, they all claim they live there. It has to do with out-of-state criminals coming to North Carolina to get illegal tags and licenses. This story has taken our Tom Rousey to Morris County, New Jersey, New York City, back to Raleigh, and finally tonight to the small town of Zebulon, North Carolina, for this On Your Side investigation. Tom? Well, Paul, in my hand, I have a list with 37 names on it. All of them claim they lived at the house we're going to show you tonight. We did a record search, and we found out dozens of others also say it's their address. Tonight, we take you inside the home it appears everyone claims they live in. To solve the mystery, we first headed to Raleigh, armed with our pictures of the home and our list of names. Even though dozens had used the address to get a North Carolina license, the DMV told us they weren't sure there was fraud. A lot of what you see in a pattern with uh, uh, immigrants is multiple families living in the same house. But dozens over just a few years, most of whom used the address to get a license? We had to go out and look for ourselves. So we drove to the country outside Raleigh, finding the home near a town called Zebulon. A look inside showed a lot of clutter, and the place seemed to be falling apart. The doors standing wide open. You see up there, the window's out. No one was there, but a record search indicated that the owner of the house lived next door. We first talked to her boyfriend, Wade. <laughs> Hey, how you doing, sir? Although he and the owner, Susan, recognize some of the names on our list. Raphael. I've heard of him. The vast majority were a mystery. They say enough people had rented the home that the well ran dry, but dozens? No way. Well, we were having problems with the well and attributed it to too many people living over there, but too many people being six or eight, possibly. 
New Jersey police believe people who don't even live in North Carolina said this was their address to get an NC license. We went inside the now abandoned home to look for evidence of fraud, but it was tough to find. Whoever did leave this place obviously left it kind of in a shambles. But amid the mess, a clue, a notice of a late traffic ticket to Ricardo Santibanez, one of the men on our list of names. The place the ticket was issued? Brooklyn, New York. It's possible he never lived here but still had an NC tag with this listed as his address. As for Wade, he says the DMV never even told him they were investigating the house. This, this information I've told you here today about nearly 40 people claiming that was their address, this is all a complete shock to you. Yeah, absolutely. Police say this kind of fraud makes it tough to track criminals down. Like that guy whose ticket from Brooklyn we found, he probably lives up that way, but since his listed address is North Carolina, Police would have a hard time finding him, Paul. Tom, how can this be? How can the state officials use this one address to give away so many tags? Well, you know, we can only guess how all these people are doing this, but there is one possibility. If I call Duke Power and say I want to change the name on my account from Tom Rousey to Paul Cameron, well, I'm going to get a bill at my address with your name on it. Well, I could give you that bill. You could go to the DMV and say, look, I live at that address, even though it's really my address. Now, like I said, we can only guess that's what they're doing, but these people could have done that repeatedly with, say, the power bill, the mm -hmm. cable bill, that sort of thing. And, and keep it's, getting their names on legal documents or seemingly legal documents. And it's considered proof of address. Amazing, Tom. Thank you.